Good afternoon, everyone. Talking about Indonesian tsunamis on YouTube will demonetize your video. So I wanted to give you a quick update on what happened after the tsunami. This was the damage, and the U.S. downgrade service has been doing a disservice in Indonesia. No geomagnetic storm, yet we're getting this type of auroras. I think our magnetosphere is a little bit weak. And when NASA comes out publicly and says the current trend continues, space age record for cold, they're talking about the thermosphere. And I said, wait, that looks really familiar. Oh, these are the sunspot cycles since 1960 as well, matching perfectly with the warming and cooling in our upper atmosphere. And join me for Mini Ice Age Conversations tri-weekly podcast, more in-depth commentary about the intensification of the grand solar minimum, and some of the reasons you're going to need to begin to grow your own food, trueleafmarket.com. The Adapt 2030 link is in the description box below, as well as links to tonight's stories and images. And we're starting to see more and more on YouTube's policy talking about grand solar minimum and anything that's not carbon dioxide driving our climate demonetized. And they sure don't want you talking about how the USGS has been downgrading every single aftershock coming out of that area. It would show a trend of upward magnitude based on solar cycles and our Earth entering a new grand solar minimum. But here's some updates. The aftermath of the tsunami, beachside, that wave was at least 10 to 15 feet tall, have people living on the streets. And we saw these same types of scenes in the Christmas earthquake in the Indian Ocean in Banda Aceh. This is a different part of Indonesia in Sulawesi Island. And the sun-earth connection is very, very clear at the moment. Now we're talking about entering into the grand solar minimum with our magnetosphere weakening, basically the Earth's shields. Here's a perfect example. There was no geomagnetic storm in progress, and this is in Alaska, and these are the auroras that were spotted with no geomagnetic storm. Imagine if there were. How intense would this be if we're getting this? I can't even imagine if we would get something in the low X-class flare what it would do to our power grids. And here we are, NASA coming out publicly now, acknowledging the grand solar minimum, the chill of the solar minimum. If the current trends continue, it could soon set a space age record for cold. I am shocked to see NASA come out, but this is the time everybody's going to try to cover themselves because when it cools, they'll say, oh, we were on record last year saying it would cool. But here's Earth's atmosphere. We have the troposphere, which is the lower part of the atmosphere. That's where all the satellites are getting the global temperature data. Then we have the stratosphere, mesosphere. And then we're talking about the thermosphere, that dark blue that starts at around 100 kilometers, extending up to space, literally 600 kilometers and above. That huge, thick band of blue is what they're talking about in the article, not these little tiny slivers. So you have to imagine... If that cools to record cold, what's it going to do to lower parts of our atmosphere and then in turn to surface temperatures on our planet? They're talking about the energy balance of air, 100 to 300 kilometers up. Remember, if you're in the United States, 100 kilometers is 60 miles, 300 kilometers, 180 miles up. And they're already talking about 2018, the thermosphere climate index on the verge of setting cold records. So what is this thermosphere climate index, the TCI for short? They break it down into categories of cold, cool, neutral, warm, and hot. Now if you take a look, solar cycle 19, solar cycle 20, 21, 22, 23, I said I have seen this chart somewhere before. But notice the undulations in temperature from hot to cold during the solar cycles. Come over here and take a look at the exact same thing. So the solar cycles are determining the temperatures, and I thought, well, maybe if I overlaid them, it would give you a better indication of where we're going with temperatures on this planet. So with that correlation well established and NASA coming on the record saying we're entering cooling, what do you think is going to happen to the temperature of our Earth when we go back to something between, say, 1640 and 1710, that red where there's no sunspots? That's where we're headed that's why NASA's coming out trying to protect themselves now, saying they were stated on the record as talking about cooling. Oh, the rats are abandoning ship. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video.
Links are below in the description box so you can do your own research. And as always, the tri-weekly podcast, many Ice Age conversations anywhere. You can find a podcast hosted across the net.